okay, everyone, I'm going to hit record. So first of all, this will be on um, our YouTube channel. Um, but firstly, I want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this week is going to be jam-packed and crazy, and I love it. Um, we are going to be covering uh, holidays from Halloween, Day of the Dead, um, Thanksgiving, for Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, you name it. I'm so excited. Joyce and Julie and Rhonda have got so much fun stuff coming up for you. Um, without further ado, I wanted to introduce myself for those of you that know me. My name is Lottie McKinnon. I am Teleflora's Program Director of Industry Relations and Education. Um, firstly, I wanted to thank you guys for joining us, for taking the time. Um, I know it's not easy with busy shops and everything, so um, this is, I promise you this will be an hour really, really well spent today. Um, I wanted to thank Teleflora um, for their amazing commitment to education and you know, allowing us to do these, continue to do these virtual programs, which is so fun. And I love hit seeing everybody's chats and comments and questions. And it really does feel like a community um, more than ever before because we, you know, we're doing our best. We can't touch and feel flowers, but we can at least see each other's faces and learn some stuff. Um, obviously, times are different and um, we're going to make the best of it. Um, today, as I said, Joyce is going to cover um, Halloween and Day of the Dead and some other fun stuff. I know she's got some surprises. Um, <laughs> and uh, on Wednesday, Julie Portler will be covering uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Kwanzaa and Hanukkah. And then on Friday, jo um, Vonda Lefebvre will be uh, doing some phone selling techniques because um, you guys have given us some awesome feedback and phone selling is something that you really needed, um, you asked us to help with. So you ask, we deliver. Um, we will also be having a design contest. Now the rules for the contest are printed on our Facebook page, Teleflora Industry Relations and Education. But I will tell you that um, what we're going to ask you to do is uh, take one tip or trick haha, um, from today's program or uh, Wednesday's program and come up with a design. Um, we've extended the deadline a little bit, so we all have until uh, next Monday at this time uh, to get your uh, con uh, contest entries to us. But all of the information is there on Facebook. Um, we also have a surprise uh, guest judge with us on Friday. So no, I'm not giving away anything, but it'll be really fun. And then um, without further ado, I am going to introduce um, my friend, Carla. Um, she is from uh, Coleman Florist in Coleman, Alabama. And she is the unit president of the Teleflorist Alabama unit. Hi, Carla. Hi. Hi. Um, Carla from Coleman Flores, like she said. And I got into this, got thrown into being the manager and a designer. And being a former teacher, I did not, I knew that education was gonna be super important to me getting going fast. And I got with Teleflora, started going to all these programs in the Southeast. And here I am nine years later. So um, I'd like to, is it time to introduce Joyce now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Joyce is from Arizona. She is a member of the AIFD and Professional Floral Communication Communicators International. She's an Arizona master florist. She works with a Accent Decor, which we all know, and she does amazing things. It's featured in lots of trade magazines and wedding uh, magazines. So with, you can see she's got a great lineup for tonight. So I'm so happy to introduce Joyce Mason Mine. Thank you. All right. I'm so excited to be here. And we're here to talk about holiday and Halloween sales. And I'm going to give you lots of different ideas. Um, I really have to thank Teleflora first off, because there's no other company that is committed to education like what Teleflora is. And because of that, I'm very proud to be part of their design team and be in Teleflora Edspec. So that's exciting for me. So why Halloween? Well, Halloween actually is the second largest consumer purchasing holiday next to Christmas. And that's kind of hard to believe, I think, just for the fact that there's a lot of sales. So if you think about it and break it down, that's about $85 per person in the United States that spends 
$85 on Halloween items, whether it's costumes, candy, decorations, etc. So back in 2019, they spent $8.8 billion on Halloween sales. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity for us and a lot of potential for the floral industry. And there's ways that we can get that marketed out there. You know, with our websites, which is where we need to be marketing today and social media, it, we can draw people in and we can make those suggestions that, hey, you can send flowers for Halloween. So if you just have it on your website and it doesn't have to be a lot of things, maybe it's just a couple of designs just to instigate that idea. I think that's great. I think that's one way to get started. Putting it out on social media and using social media to your best ability is where we need to be. So connecting with your customers and making sure that you're putting pictures out and images out. Teleflora has hundreds of high definition photos that you can use for all times of the year. So make sure you latch onto that and make sure that you're using those to your fullest potential. Teleflora is the leader in technology with POS and websites. And so let them help you. So that's what's great. So I've got some great design ideas for you. Some of them are really simple and very cost effective. Some may be a little bit more challenging and then we have some that may be a little bit retro. It's like kind of like, oh yeah, I remembered how to do that or I've seen that before. Why am I not doing that? So lots of different ideas, lots of different things, lots of different products and maybe some new products that you can see that we're going to start. So one of the things that we're going to start, first of all, with the first one. And if you're making designs and putting them in your cooler, putting them on your website, putting them out on social media, you got to put a name to them. So our first design that we're going to talk about is Monster Mash. So Monster Mash being, let's see, have a little bit of fun. So something very simple, something very easy, I have two hands to grab it, is a cactus garden. If you look really close, you can see that we have eyes attached to our little monsters. So we have the old man of the ant, he says little bitty eyes here. Here we have, this is a Caribbean tree cactus that has some little eyes on it. This one is the bristle breast, and then my favorite, which is the curiosity cactus, which is just very appropriate for all of this. A little bit of Oasis adhesive and a little bit of glue, count to 10 and put it on and don't get stuck. So we'll glue him on. Just takes a few minutes for that to adhere. And just be careful with using cactus, of course, because you can get thorns in your fingers and glue stuck to your fingers, there we go. So it's really simple and easy just to decorate that up. And then it'd be really simple and easy for the consumer just to take those eyes off, only if they want to. But I had to do a little bit more decoration to this. Of course, the googly eyes you can buy anywhere that you want to, and you get tons of them. But I wanna add also just some dried materials because dryads are really, really popular right now. So I just had some dried flowers that I just accented with Design Master, flat black. And then I've got a spider that I'm gonna add. And all I did is glue a wire into him and tuck that in. So you can decorate that up and make it really fun. Now, just for Lottie, just because she said one of her favorite designs that I did a long time ago was done with broccoli. Yay! <laughs> I had to show the broccoli, but we're going to kind of add a little bit to this. And see, so it's just a piece of broccoli that's stuck on there. Let's see, which way do I want him up? There we go. And it's just in floral foam. And this happened, the containers for both of these happen to be in the Thanksgiving line. So they're very versatile to use. I've just also color enhanced some salal to make it black. Does that look good? <laughs> So now he's got teeth. So it's just our little monsters, little branches, just some oranges to add some emphasis to that very focal area. But these are our little monster mash, so I hope you like them. All right, so let's move on. Joyce, to one our next in before you move on, where did you get the spider from? This, um, the internet. <laughs> just go to Amazon or wherever and you can buy anything or go to a, you know, a Halloween store. There's lots of spirit stores that are out and about. So you can get them anywhere. So I like those spiders because they're kind of, they have a nice size to them and they have lots of color to them. So the next one is I've got my eyes on you. So what I'd like to do oops, is I've got a black car rose here and I'm just going to kind of open him up just a little bit. 
just so I can get down to the inside. If you have roses that maybe are a little bit tight yet, you can kind of make them into like a garden rose. So you can kind of take out those middle petals because what we're gonna do is take an eyeball and then you know what? I'm just gonna use the waste as a season because I think that's easier on the flowers than it is hot glue. Hot glue is gonna burn. So waste this adhesive, tuck it down into the rows. So then I have to hold it there for just a little bit so it's going to adhere. Well, let me show you what you come up with. Is I have my eyes on you. So we've got all of our black Bacar roses arranged so that they have little eyeballs. And I just have them in a black base. You can use whatever base you want. Now, going back to David Power's program, he talked about a new eucalyptus. This is a Stuart Yana eucalyptus. And I fell in love with it when he showed that because of the color palette that it is. So I got some of that just so I can use it in this design. But you can see the colors in this is just absolutely beautiful. It's that lighter green. So I love that. So try some new things with this. But here we go. I got my eyes on, I have lots of eyes on you for sure. Thanks, Garrett. All right. Before you yes. continue, I'm sorry, um, we had a great question. Um, sure. The vase life of the broccoli. Vase life, like forever. <laughs> okay, there you, you go. You put it in water, it lasts forever. So a good couple of weeks at least. So no worries about it. Okay, so now everybody, oh, I need a new name. Gone fatty, or as John Hosek says, I got bats in my belfry. Um, we should be working on Christmas right now in most retail shops. So that's time for me putting it out at least, hopefully you got it out and that you're selling it. So holly, this is an old trick. We've had this around for a long time. You take a holly leaf and a little bit of hot glue and attach one to the other side like this. Pin it down to like a cardboard box and spray it with flat black design master. And then you end up with bats. So as you can see, I've added some fishing line to them. So you can see my little bat. So I think this thing's really fun. I always love this one just because it's got a great show to it. And let me see my design. So here I've got another one of the tall floor Thanksgiving containers. This one happens to be the autumn color container. And I'm just gonna take the bats and I'm just gonna tie them on the branches. These are just branches that are just went out to my front tree in my front yard and cut them off and use them in branches. You could use birch, you can use whatever you want to. And then with the fishing line and just tying them on. What I love about this design is the fact that if there's an air conditioner on or the windows open and this is sitting anywhere near a breeze, they move. And I think that's just really fun. Anytime you can have an interactive design, I think it's just really creative. And it just gets people involved. And that's what I just love. So we're gonna add all these bats just to give us some depth. It gives us another perceptive sight line. So your eyes stop at the bats and then you move into the design. The design itself has tulips, but if you're using tulips and we're getting back into the season where tulips are coming back, you know, you have to let them do what they wanna do. They're gonna grow out of the design no matter what, doesn't matter. So just let them do that. So you can create a design that helps them do that. So as we're tying it around, we've got it all the way around, just giving this another sight line and a dimension. You have to have the inner core with all of your flowers to be a little bit different than dark. You want them so that they're gonna show up so that you can see the bats, make it worth their while. I have in the very base of this done my basing techniques I've done with the carnations and the orange rose that I used is voodoo. And there's a reason for that because it's so appropriate for Halloween. So you, and I love voodoo just because they open up beautifully and they're a long lasting rose. So it just gives us that beautiful orange color and that emphasis that we have. So I love that. So having bats in your belfry is okay, John. So tying all those in. So you can see how quick and easy that is just to add some dimension and some fun to that. And you can have all kinds of bats. There we go. All right. Thank you. All right. My assistant today is my wonderful husband, Gerhard. So we have to give him, just give him a round of applause. God bless. 
golf clap. Yep. So here we have something for Day of the Dead. So I've got the Teleflora black cube. I'm going to take the liner out of it because I don't need that. And before I put that, let's put this on. So I've got some Day of the Dead, which is Dia de los Muertos. Now here in Southern Arizona, it's a big holiday because we have a very large Hispanic population. And so, and I love going to the parades and all the parties and different things because it's so much fun because it's a huge celebration. And it's really about um, making offerings to those that have passed away and just making just reference to them and just having a great celebration for their life that they had. So I'm gonna use some duct tape and this is one of my favorite things to use is duct tape. And I'm just gonna use it over top of this cube and just go all the way around. Make lots of noise here, sorry. And make it just stand out. Come back to the other side. I loved using duct tape for just about anything because it's waterproof. It gives us lots of abilities to do so many different things with it. So then I'm going to come down the side and one more time. So I'm just doing a crisscross across the top, as you can see. What that does, it's creating a grid for me which is a, what I call a space hog. And a space hog is basically, thank you, basically something that takes up a lot of space in your design. And that definitely takes up a lot of spaces. All I have left is a, four little holes that I have to put products in. Now, the one product that is really popular for Dia de los Muertos are marigolds. I tried to get marigolds. They weren't on the market for me. So sometimes we're having trouble getting some of the markets and I just some products on the market. And I just read this morning or watched a webinar from Mesh about how roses are becoming a problem again. So you just have to be patient with the markets because it's gonna come back. We just have to be just let our consumers know that because of situations right now, not everything's gonna be available. So I added water to this. And then, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get that kick back there. Because I want to make a bow, and you can't unless you double tape your duct tape. All I did, you know, to make a bow, I just took some ribbon and put duct tape on it. So then I can make a bow very easily, and I'm just going to glue that on the top. Cut my wire off here. So this is a simple one. This is fast and easy. Just to glue that right to the duct tape. I love duct tape just because it's waterproof. You do so many different things with it. And now I have a little skull because DSA Mortress is all about skulls. It's not, it's a pretty decorated one, but it just fits right into this. Now I'm not into the gore of Halloween. I like the real cutesy things, not the blood and guts and all that. I don't like that, but I like the really cute parts of Halloween. This is, this is a happy occasion. So I like using this for all of the Dia de los Muertos. So then we're gonna add some flowers to this. And I've got some beautiful voodoos, which are just a beautiful rose. So we're gonna add that. And all I have to do now is put things in my four corners. That's all I have. Simple, this is so simple. You could have anybody in your store make them. So put four in, I've got some beautiful celosia. It gives me that brain solution, which gives you some great texture. I have a hypericum berry. We're gonna add, so this just gives me the easiness of being able just to add a little minimum product to it, but yet you've got some great design. Um, I like using the duct tape because I can create just about any type of theme that I want, because it, you can get duct tape in any theme. So that really helps when you want a certain color or if you want to bring in a certain pattern, go check out duct tape because there's a lot of varieties that you can use that will create that. So happy Dia de los Muertos. Woohoo! Skulls. Very fun. All right. Thank you, Bear. Okay, so our next one. Are you liking the ideas? I hope you are. We are They're loving fun. it. Good, good, good. All right, so we're gonna create now, I have a bowl of water, that's all this is, and my glue gun. And we're going to make, oh, I guess I need a name. Spidey Senses, here we go, Spider-Man. 
I'm going to make concentric circles in this. So I'm going to start with the center and just go around and then just make circles. You don't have to be neat about it and keep going around. Connect, start connecting them so they all kind of stay in place. Make sure you have cool water so that it's going to harden faster. And then just make it as big as you want it to be. And just keep making this and just keep going. And make sure all the time that you're connecting your concentric circles with additional glue so that they all stay together. And it's all built. And then it just takes a little bit of time for that to just kind of cool down. You can splash a little water on it if you feel like it's necessary. But this is what it ends up looking like. So if you can see, it creates this fabulous spider web. I'm gonna turn it over so it's not so hot. And it's just fun and it's easy to do. So think about how fun things you could do with this. I just love creating these types of things in our web. Let me get rid of the water. So now we need a design to put it into. So here I've taken another one of the autumn colors container. I love this because it's that beautiful birch look to it. So it fits right into fall. And then I've done a framing design with this. So this is birch that's coming up that I've enhanced with black design master paint. And then our beautiful cross combia or mabrisha blooming that brings that eye down to our center. When you're doing framing in a design, the really important thing to create is that you want your eye to come up and then come right back down. So it's the focal areas which you brought, brings your eye right down to that very base. So we've got our beautiful voodoo's right down at the very base, black salal that ties right into Halloween, of course, the Halloween colors. And then you want the branches, something similar to that, to be able to add your cobweb too, because it has to be something, you don't want to add hot glue to any type of fresh material, especially like a fresh flower. So I'm just going to put glue on, hot glue right on the back of my spider web and then attach it right to a branch and just let it set. It doesn't take very long. Come off of my little flower. Oh, get off there. And then our next one on the other side, you can add as many as you want to, to this. But I just really think it's a fun, easy way to draw attention. Now you can get glue sticks in all different colors. You can get them glittered, you can do all kinds of things. So you can create some fun looks with this. We also have to add our spider to this. So I have another spider. And I'm just going to use the hot glue. And really, this time of year is about the only time I use hot glue, besides pan glue, just to create our beautiful webs. So adding our spider to it just to create that detail, which I think is just really kind of fun. So it just lets us be creative with that and creating the spider webs. Come on, you're going to stay put for me. Get you in there. There we go just to add some fun to that. So I love doing our little spider senses. We want to add the second one, we could do that. Now that it's nice and cool, I can work it in. So you can build this as much as you want to, into the area that you want, come here, branch. There we go. There we go. Uh-oh, somebody's taking a jump here. He wants to make more webs, doesn't he? We might have to use a little heavy. We might have to have a little bit of a wire to hold him in place. But we'll get him in there. We're going to go and make sure he stays. There we go. Right along with it. So then our spidey senses with our autumn colors. You know, as they say that if you see a spider on Halloween, it's supposed to be good luck. Maybe it is all year round. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't like spiders. So if I did have a tarantula in my front door or in my courtyard the other day, so we're looking for a place to go because it's starting to get cooled off. All right, Spidey it is. Next. Joyce, we've had um, yes. a great um, little comment from Diane Lagerstead, um, who's on here. She's one of our awesome yeah. um, territory yeah. sales managers, and she made this great suggestion about um, one of her shops has added cute little Halloween candy bags of treats as an add-on sale for website and phone sales. And um, that's a great idea. 
gave me a great idea because that that piece that you just did is kind of the real wow factor that you could highlight on your um you know your homepage for your website so it'd be awesome absolutely yeah especially not knowing whether kids can really trigger treat now or not i don't know i don't know if i've let my kids go trigger treating maybe so but that's a really good way to do that so offer that on your site you put that on your website and have candy available to add on to any design that's a great idea so very fun all right next one is our haunted forest. So this is a little bit more difficult to do, but it just takes a little bit of time. It's not like it's that difficult, but you have to be creative with it and just take your little patience. So I have three 18 gauge wires that I'm gonna to tape together just because I want that stability. So I'm gonna take three of these. All the way down and then I have some yarn. This is just black yarn that I got at the yarn store and a little piece of U-glue. And anytime that I can add textures to a design, that's I think is just really great. I love the use of texture. It just gives us that depth and emphasis that we need. So I'm just gonna take this fuzzy little yarn and just add it to my wire. Now I can go down as far as I want, or I can just use a little branch. It just depends upon how big you want your branches to go. I'll show you how to assemble it here in a second. And then when you're finished, wherever, how far down you want, just use another piece of U-glue so that you can just pull that off, there we go, and attach that. U-glue and wire and fabric that have magic, they will never come off. So that's one of the greatest things. So what I've done is I've added a couple shorter ones to the one main branch. And that's simply by taking a couple of these together and then add them to your main branch. And I'm just gonna tape those together and add a little bit more yarn to this. Come on, there we go. And just build this. So I'm going to continue making this tree is what I want to do. So down a little ways, a little bit of glue, and just continue adding this until you have the size that you need. Now you can make this as big as you want, as little as you want. You can add two together. So now you can see our tree is building. And when I get down to the very bottom, I use some of the shorter ones to make some roots. So you can see I've added this to a black cube and I just want to manipulate my roots a little bit. I want to be able to come underneath with some flowers. But you see you can just create this tree any way that you want to. You can get as detailed as you want or as simple as you want. It's totally up to you, whatever you like to do. Thank you. Well, let's add a few flowers to this. So I want to go underneath those First of all, underneath the roots. You know, I have every intention of hitting a trash can and it's not gonna happen. So I know, I try, it's not gonna happen. A Little bit of green trick. I have the beautiful moonlight uh, foraging carnations that just pull that purple and orange together. That's the colors of Halloween. I love doing that. Um, let's add another. Foraging. My rule of thumb goes like this. If you put it on one side, put it on the other side. And that's pretty much meaning that if I put one color on one side, I want to create that color balance by placing it on the other side. What that does is it gives me the ability to do four balances all at once. I do the color balance, of course, the visual balance, physical balance, and textural balance just by doing that. So then I'm able to create and add to. I've got some beautiful lilies that I want to pull into this. Stunning. So I love using orange lilies, especially for this time of year, for the fall. And again, just adding those in just creates that volume. And then depending upon your tree and how you want to encompass that, 
you know, and I inserted it right into the foam because I had the stem of wires, all the bare wires that had been taped. That was bare yet. You could finish that off and glue it to a side of the container if you wanted to. Otherwise, you just insert it right into the floral foam. Now, I also have some lily grass that I want to add to this. And I have to show you this. So for those who've never seen, I'm going to get a dark spot. This is the bloom off of lily grass. I have a couple lily grass plants on my patio and it blooms this time of year. And these are so fun and just stunning to me. So I like to use those. I just, sometimes it's just nice to see things that we don't normally see and use products that we've never used before. But I'm sure this is not available on any commercial market, but I just think it's fun to be able to see that all green plants bloom in some form, one way or another, and it just gives us that ability to then to see something fun. So then I'm just gonna add a little bit of lily grass just to give us some liveliness. So it's not quite so structural. And just let that line relax just a little bit so that we have some fun with our enchanted tree or enchanted forest. So I hope you take some ideas back with you, use them so that you can have some fun ideas to put on your websites and social media. So don't forget to name them. Don't forget to have some fun with them. And I love that purple tucked right in there with those moon vista. So there we go. All right. Thank you. All right. What's up next? This one is Mummy's the Word. So Mummy's the Word. Of course, it's all about mummies. So we have a cute little telephone cylinder and a couple of eyes. All right. So this is, you can see it makes a mess. This is Plaster Paris gauze. You can buy this online anywhere. And it's used for like, you can get it at craft stores too, because it's used for crafts. But what you want to do with this so I got my water back. And as you can see, you take it a little bit and you just skim it in the water. Don't soak it or you'll never hear the end of it. So skim it across the water and then start putting it onto your vase. And what that does is wraps around that and you just continue doing that. And I'm, I'm getting a phone call and I think it's probably a political call so we're not gonna answer it. So we're just wrap this around and then you wanna put your eyes on and just keep developing that. Now this takes, and just, you know, you can add as many layers as you want and it takes about mm, 24, 12 to 24 hours just to finish that. So I wanna show you one that's all completed, which is just like this. So it's really fun. And it just gives you the ability to be creative. It's fun with the idea of having mummies or whatever. But here's the thing, it's not waterproof. So if you wanna use it for fresh flowers, which we do wanna do, you wanna spray it with some type of clear porcelain, some shellac or something that's gonna seal it up because if it gets wet, it may run a little bit. We don't want that to happen. So we're gonna fill this with a little bit of water. And then we're going to add our design to it. So all I've done is taken out, I love these beautiful anemones. So we've got the anemones and some of the star baby's breath. And this is, I love these. These are starry pods. These are actually, if you look at them really close, they're so cool. I just love them. They're clematis um, seed pods. So this is the time that you can get those. And they're just really fun because I think they have kind of an eerie, cast them, just really kind of fun. They're really easy. And I love using the anemones that are black and white. So it kind of adds to all of that theme. So mummy's the word. Love this. All right. Thank you. So if we're still on to Plaster Paris, I want to just talk about, let me give you a hand. So we're going to use Plaster Paris in a white glove. So what I've done is mixed up Plaster Paris. And if you've never worked with Plaster Paris, you gotta do it really fast because it dries very quickly. So you wanna be really careful with it. 
It also is going to make a mess, so do it somewhere where you're not going to have any problems. But you kind of want to get it into a liquid form so it, that it's not runny, runny. It's kind of like it's a cake batter kind of thing. So it'll, it's easy to pour. And so then I've just got it. This is just a painter's glove. And it's a, I wanted something white. So you pour the plaster pour Paris into the glove. And then you want to kind of form it over something. So wherever you're going to put it, like I wanted to put it over a container so that I could get, so I've got some dimension with the fingers. So I sealed it off with some duct tape at the very end once I had it all in there and then just kind of form them over a container so they'll dry. Now this takes about 48 hours to dry. So it's a little bit longer. It's gonna seep out and seem wet and it gets hot. And that's fine, just let it do its process. And about 48 hours later, you're gonna have this. So I have a hand as you can see, and you, so you can form it in any way that you want. So I have one of the telephore pumpkins and I drilled a hole in the bottom of it and used a wood pick just to put that in there. Actually, it's a plastic pick because I don't want the pick to absorb any water to go up into the plastic to cause me any problems. So now we've got a hand in here. Let's finish this off just really quick. Oh, if you want a preventative, I took a, this happened to be a mason jar lid that I sprayed white. So I have a protected barrier, if I can get it through there. I guess I didn't quite make my hole big enough. Here we go. So then now it's not going to get wet. So that's a little trick that you can do. Or use something plastic, you know, even like a, the lid off of the sodas that you buy at some of the fast food places. Yeah, that would work. So we're just going to add to it. So very quickly, we're going to highlight him and give him some fun. So we've got some beautiful foxtail fern. We're going to come around this and cross. Over. I want to add, and we're just going to kind of make him our focal area of the whole design. So he's going to come around and just add with our little framing. I have some beautiful carnations that we're going to use at the very base just to create my basing. And I love using carnations just because they last forever. Great color impact, great textural impact. It's just really kind of fun. So you can see the impact that we have with that. I'm gonna use a lily. And just give a little bit more emphasis at the top. There we go. Bring that down. Got a lily down in our base. And you can also make this to put like Halloween for like candy. If you wanted just to stick that in there and then just add candy to it, you could do that for a nice decorating technique. It's just kind of fun and scary. Adds that emphasis, it's really fun. If you don't know what the number one candy is that's sold every year for Halloween, can anybody guess what that is? Maybe it's your favorite. It's Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So that's the number one that we see. There's $2.7 billion worth of candy sold every year for Halloween. That's a lot of sugar, but it's fun. Every year I have about 400 trick-or-treaters that pass my door, so we hand out lots of candy. Hopefully we'll have a few this year because it's always really kind of fun. So as long as everybody's trick-or-treating safely, we have a good time with it, I'm all about it. So, so you can see the fun that we can have with that just by emphasizing it. And because it's white, oh my gosh, it really shows up. It really stands out. You really see that. And if you're going to go to the effort to make something like this, make sure you can see it. Make sure it stands out and that it becomes your focal emphasis in your design. So there is, let me give you a hand design. All right. Joyce. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Lottie. <laughs> That is seriously the coolest thing. We have a couple of questions. So before you move sure. on to more gorgeousness. Um, okay, we have a couple of questions. Well, firstly, people are commenting that a lot of them are going to be stopping on the way to or from home tonight to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what we want to see. Um, question, can you paint the hand with Design Master? 
You can, absolutely. Just make sure it's nice and dry. So give it that 48 hours and yes, you can paint it any color that you want. So if you don't want white, if you don't want it to be a mummy, you could be anything. That's cool. All right. All right, thank you for the great questions. So this one is, I've got to hand it to you. So we're on that hand theme. So here I have just plastic skeleton hands. And you can buy it anywhere out there that says Halloween. And I just put a wire up into them to pull them up. And then I have this beautiful hand tie. It's like so. That's all done with all these beautiful orange flowers. And then of course I love those pods. And I'm just gonna take it and just place them into the design. So if you sell base arrangements, if you sell wrapped flowers, this is a great way to add to the design just to have some fun and give them a hand. So there's our hands. And everybody knows how to make a nice hand tied. So I don't have to go through that with you, but I just want to use then some bind it tape. And if you're not using bind it tape for your hand tied, you need to. Bind it tape is just a clear tape that comes on a roll like so. And it only sticks to itself. So it just may, if you ever, there you go, get it off of the roll. It's just a great way to not damage the stems that you create when you're making that hand tight. And once you have it bound together, it's never ever gonna come apart. And then I'm just gonna use some ribbon. I can't wait too much here, so let's just do some. Some ribbon to wrap around just to cover that up because you can see it and we don't wanna see that. Make it nice and neat. Joyce, would you the name of the, those pods, please, for us? They are called star pods or um, clematis pods, clematis blue, um, seed pods. Thank you. So the, I don't know what I, the wholesaler that I use calls them star pods. So I would imagine you probably get them if you just ask for clematis pods. You can have those too. I love them. I just think they're fabulous. And it's only available pretty much this time of year. But there we have our spooky hands that are going to give it, give you a hand with your design. Fun. All right. Okay. Here you go, G. Thank you. All right. Now we have the beautiful bouquet. It's beautiful. So I've got the Telefloor white pumpkin. So I love using this. This is um, you know, not traditional, but I love using this and just creating some fun things. So with that, of course, comes the lid. And we're just gonna put that off to the side. Of course, with the little bracket that it creates. Now we're gonna add to this some branches. And of course, I've already enhanced them. This happens to be a tree, um, grass bamboo. And just make sure it's got a little point to it. So I'm just going to go one direction here and just create kind of that free form style that we've been seeing, which I love because it gives us that beautiful garden styling. The thing to remember with it, of course, is that you have to follow the principles and elements of design. You just can't throw things in there. Everything has to be intentional. Why are you doing this? If you put one of something and it's not in your focal area, you have to repeat it again somewhere else. So like I've repeated the branches, so I'm just not gonna put one, but if I had a big protea that I was gonna put in the very center, you could do one, because that's your focal area. So let me take this, guys. If you would slide this forward, we're gonna get to that, so we're gonna a beautiful little raven here in a second. So I have some foxtail fern that I've enhanced with black. So we're gonna get a beautiful line movement with this. And follow through. And anytime that you add um, paint to this, Anytime you enhance foliages with paint, they're gonna last a whole lot longer. Here I have some Fatsia that I've enhanced with that Design Master. And you use, always use Design Master just because it's gonna be good for your flowers. It's not going to hurt your foliages and flowers. 
It's going to enhance them and make them beautiful and give them the color palette that you're looking for. We're going to continue on just building this. I also have some Xanadu. And if you've never smelled Xanadu, you got to smell it. Oh my gosh, to me, it smells like rhubarb. But that's the Iowa farm girl coming out in me. But I just love it. I think it's just really fun. So I'm going to add some Xanadu for some zap. And then I have some bullet allium that I want to put into this just to give my free form. It's kind of an English garden style too, but it gives us that freedom that we want and just loose. Adding the purples to this. Now what happens with this is our emphasis right now is that pumpkin because it's white. Everything else I'm adding to it is really, really dark. And so we'll see what we can do with that. We might change that up just a little bit. Adding a little bit of the allium. And some beautiful dark purple calla lilies too that we can add to this. Calla lilies are just that beautiful curvilinear line to them. Just adds to this design tremendously. And one of the tricks with calla lilies is that if you want to do something out of water with them, you can. If you seal up their end with glue and then maybe I like to put something decorative on it, like wire or yarn or something, you seal that all up. They can stay, make sure they're really turgid, but they can stay out of water for three days in an event. So that's really fun to do ahead of time. And you know that you can do these great suspensions with them. You can do all kinds of things. All right, enough of those. I have also some blooming oregano and I have to cheat a little bit. I love this color because it's got a little bit of that purple on it. And it came from my, a pot of oregano that I have in my patio too. So but I just had to use it. Sometimes you just get that inspiration. Like, I've got to use it just because it's so beautiful. I've got to use it. So I had to have some. So I'm going to add a little bit of that just to kind of tie in a little bit of green to that very base. And I have also <clears throat> some of these beautiful Moon Vista dark purple carnations that I'm going to add to the very base of this. And now we're going to continue. I have a little bit of silver dusting on it. This is going to soften this a little bit so it's not so stark with that pumpkin. So if I put that down into the very base, I'm able then just to, that pumpkin white is not just boom, there it is. It kind of softens that up just a little bit so that we're able then to see. So let's see, I have my beautiful little crow. Of course, that always fits for Halloween. If you ever watched The Birds, that 1963 movie with Alfred Hitchcock, oh my gosh, I give Tippi Hedren some major credit because that scares me. Anytime I see a flock of birds, like all hanging out, it just kind of freaks me out. But that's what you get when you watch it when you're a little kid. So, wrapping that in. So I've got two little wood picks on here. So that's going to keep him in place. He's not going to spin. So tucking him right into that very center. I also have some feathers that are on a pick that I'd like to add in just to give it, just to kind of repeat the feather feel that we have, just to kind of show us that it all ties in together. And that's that repetition again. That's that feeling of the same type of product all put together. So then we have our beautiful bouquet. Did I finish everything off the top? Let's put one more in here. There we go. He's beautiful. All right. Love this one. Love those dark colors. Okay. So let me get this white off here. And on to our next one. Again, I hope everybody's having fun. We're coming down to the wire. I've got a few more minutes. This is our scary spine. Joy, so, so many this is saying that they're going to steal your steal your ideas. <laughs> they can steal them all they want. That's what we're here for. 
Okay, so I want to show you the spine. So this is just a black wire. So this is a 16 gauge wire that I got at one of the hardware stores. And then I have the Smoothers Oasis metallic wire in black and a little bit of U glue on here. So you can kind of see, I have a white piece of paper so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm just taking it and I don't care what the length is, it could be random and just wrapping it around a couple times and then cutting it off. And you just continue that because I want to put it on a bud vase. So with that, what that means is that you have to make this a little bit longer than the length of your bud vase. So you can see what I've done. Here I have a, excuse me, an accent decor base that I just added this to the very top of it. And then it gives me this huge dimension because on the end of each of these little wires, I have a little sticker. So all of these little creepy little stickers are on there from the moons to bats, to cats, to anything that you want. And you can add that on. You can do this in any color. You can add anything to this. If you want to do it for fall, just add the fall leaves to it. But what this does, and I love this because it gives you such dimension and interaction with the base itself. A simple bud base can be really, really fun. So it gives us that fun um, ability then to make this any way that you want. And it's just, it's just a little bit, so it doesn't take long. If you make it about five or six inches long, it doesn't take long to do that. The hardest part then is just putting everything on each one. It doesn't have to have anything on every single one of them. I like using hyperic berries on the end of that because it's just, it just gives you dimension and it's really fast. So here we've added the stickers. I'm gonna add a few flowers to this. So another beautiful lily. Just have the one lily. Oh, Gerhardt just made the suggestion. He wants to add googly eyes to this. So that would be fun to have all eyes looking at you. Oh, oh, oh. That would be really scary. And then some of these dark purple carnations. Tucked in just to kind of hold that in place. It just becomes kind of base. I also have some lily grass or some bear grass, excuse me. And we're just gonna tuck that in just to add some more life to it, motion to follow the movement of the wire. But you could do this with any bud base. It could be a simple bud base. It could be a beautiful one from Axon Core, doesn't matter. Whatever you wanna do. And it just gives you that ability to have some fun with it. It's all about creative, taking the ideas and doing something fun with them. Make them your own, do something different. Or you can just copy them, I don't care. That's what it's here for, It's just to give you some great ideas. Put a name on it, put it in, take a picture of it. You all should have an area to take photography in your store because it's so vital that you're doing social media. So have a nice, buy a, a, a light box or just put a nice white background area on a white table and take your picture and then put it on social media, put it on your website, all these different things. Of course, the smaller it is, the easier it's going to be to see on your websites. So keep that in mind too. So it doesn't have to be a tall base. It can be something really, really simple. So think about how fun that is. All right. And then last but not least, I put a web on you. So here's an old trick that always works. We have a tell floor pumpkin. Two pieces of styrofoam and a glue pot. So a little bit of glue on your styrofoam. Put them together. Count to ten. How are you doing? Is it good? It's, it's, I love Halloween. Here we go. This is the funnest. This is the funnest part of Halloween, is to make cobwebs. So using the strings here, you don't have to take them off. When we do all kinds of permanent botanical designs. We want them on. So it makes it nice and creepy and scary and spooky and a mess, which is fun. And then I have some spiders that I want to add to this also. So just using these are just ring spiders. You can buy them to wear on your fingers, put them in your designs, whatever you want to do. They're black. I can't see them on my table. Come here. Yeah, there. Here we go. 
and just have some fun with it. I got a beautiful little tortilla in there, that pincushion. Just adds some great dimension. So there we have it. I put a web on you. Aha. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. I hope you got some great ideas. I love sharing with you. If you have any questions, just make sure you let Lottie know because it's just really fun. I thank Lottie for all of her time. And don't forget that you have to tune in to see Julie Kohler on Wednesday for her Christmas and holiday sales. And then also a bottle of fever and her sales tips that are coming up on Friday. Make sure you take part of that. You have to enter the design competition. I want you to do that. Will you do that for me? Take some of these ideas, make them your own. And I want to thank Teleflora for letting me be part of today. Thank you, Lottie. Joyce, you are amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> My mind is going crazy. I've been taking notes like a mad woman. So I am definitely going to get to the hardware store and um, <laughs> <make sure. laughs> before the end of the day. So um, before everyone leaves, I wanted to remind you um, the design contest information is on our Facebook page. Go over there, mull it over. Um, thank you so much to Joyce. You are amazing. I just, I'm like blown away. Um, and also thank you to Carla and Michelle um, who wasn't able to get on here due to a couple of technical issues, but we'll see her on Wednesday. Um, thank you so much for everybody's time. We really appreciate you. And we will see you same time, same place on Wednesday. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.